Um, thank you for joining us, Mr. Atencio. I'd like to introduce our president and CEO, Dr. Frank Yang, who has been in the analytical business for many, many years and who holds about 15 patents in the field of HPLC, high performance liquid chromatography, and who in the last few years, last two years, I think it is, is that correct, Dr. Yang? About two years? Yes, mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> applied Raman spectroscopy to develop the AccuScan, which is the most advanced in the chemical analysis field. And I let Dr. Young go ahead now with his presentation, and I apologize for keeping you all waiting so long. But Dr. Young, uh, you can go ahead and give the presentation. Okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Atencio. Sorry about the uh, situation Good this morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your, your patience too, so that's nice. Um, well, what I, uh, because of the, the time kind of limited, so I want to just go ahead and uh, give you a little bit, uh, a brief discussion of what the technology we have in the Roman uh, chemistry, uh, molecule identifications. So you look at the first overhead I uh, have, you know, on the screen right now. Uh, we are talking about AccuScan 1500 Raman analyzer. Mm -hmm. This uh, does offer you uh, a very easy and very fast or content uniformity validations from uh, product kind of productions. So like for the QA, you want to have 100% assurance of your drugs, you know, produced. And uh, normally, they will take 1% of the drugs and send it to HPLC laboratory, mm -hmm. and then it will stand and take uh, one day to turn around. And this is just, uh, well, does it work? Does it, you know, meet specs? It better than 10% uh, uniformity or not? Then they have to make a judgment, but it's sometimes very late. So sometimes they have to discard the whole production of one day and it could be, you know, uh, quite a lot of, you know, uh, money, and they have to mm -hmm. waste all that. Otherwise, their product sent it to the over the counter, the drugstore. Uh, if the FDA inspected and it didn't meet specification, then they have to pull down from the uh, from the drugstore. So it have to be, you know, uh, out from the shelf. So this assurance is required in many countries right now, like in Japan you have to assure that all the drugs in the middle specifications. And so the drug uniformity in terms of the potency is one of the uh, important issues going to come up. Uh, and that's 1% uh, testing, uh, who knows, you know, about the 99% of the drugs, you know, just go into the battle. And that's, uh, that's a kind of take a high risk in that. So we developed this dormant detector allow user, not only the drugstore, but also any manufacturers of chemicals, uh, food additives, uh, then it's easy to assure that in their production line, they not only can control the conditions, but also to allow them to have assurance that their product, you know, uh, going to this grocery store, going to the uh, drugstore, they all meet, uh, you know, what they are proposed or on their label. Mm -hmm. And the analysis time is about 1.2 minutes per sample. And you don't need to prepare the sample. You could take the drop tablets, just put it there, and then uh, it will tell you, okay, you are using the right components, right drug ingredients, or, and also the content of the ingredients, the 500 milligram is there or not. So this only takes, you know, less than 1.2 minutes per sample. And it costs about $1 or less per sample. Uh, this include labor in it. And so it is important too uh, for future, for, you know, the drug company or the chemical production company, cosmetic producing company, uh, food, you know, additive, food, uh, say, pigment, you know, producing company, the uh -huh. production of the drinks, you know, say, uh, they have colors in their drinks, uh, food, juice, drink, uh, those things, uh, then you have easy way and very low cost to assure that your quality is good. Instead of going to the HPLC laboratory and instead of going to mass spectrometry to do the identification of it. 
So this is the goal of our products, and then uh, I want to show you how we achieve that and what our technology, you know, is all based on. Okay. So we're going to the next. Of course, we have to make sure that this product has a market. So if you look into the uh, pharmacopoeia in U.S. and in Europe, the European pharmacopoeia and U.S. pharmacopoeia, they all prescribe the best or the the describe prescribe. The Raman spectroscopy is the uh, the best for the uh, identification of raw materials. Means drug company for since 2012, all the drug company had to identify their raw material coming in, and I put that in the in the uh, computer uh, storage, so they don't miss the component when they pull the component from the shelf or the warehouse. They pick the wrong components, you know, wrong bag. And then make the drugs, you know, totally uh, counterfeit drugs, you know, so they cannot be uh, sold at all. And so, in US and in all the European countries, drug company they have to uh, use environment as a as a mission as a as a detector for identify those. And uh, that's because you know Raman has this unique chemistry, you know, molecular fingerprints. So it will allow us to. Very easy to identify what that uh, ingredient is, and uh, of course this is not only could be used in the ingredient uh, identification on the raw material, but also in the products itself. And the goal is that can we using this Raman detector to be in the production line for quality assurance, and then also in the testing of the drugs you now for 100% uh, content uniformity. So that's what. You know, important is that okay. So the the pharmacopoeia, the U.S. government, they accept this as a method to be used for drug or material testing. Okay. So new infrared is also a one uh, is a similar characteristic as Raman because of its vibration natures. But new infrared is the one doing the transmission, transmission, test and trans transmission. So the light, just like UV detector or a person detector. It transmits through the sample uh, cell, and then you detect, ca capture the uh, signal at the other end, you know, CCD placed on the other end of the full cell. Raman is different. So it basically, you shine the laser on it, or the lights on it, and then you will reflect into the basic reverse 180 degree coming to your CCD. So the CCD is placed on the same uh, plane as the uh, immediate uh, kind of incident light, say 785 or 1064, you know, nanometer light, shining on the sample. So the sample is, uh, say you, you put the sample in one of the uh, vials, and so the light, you know, shining into the sample molecules, the molecule emit the Raman light uh, mm -hmm. and the spectrum, and the spectrum is corrected on the same plane as the as the uh, incident lights, but 180 degree reverse. So this uh, kind of emitting lights, you know, give you a uniqueness is that it give you the very sharp peaks, very simple to identify peak, just like chromatography peaks. So there's a spectrum, and those spectrum, all the spectrum, very sharp spectrum, and then you could identify uh, those very easily. And near infrared, of course, not the same way. So. Uh, that's a significant difference. So you look at the uh, near infrared spectrum versus Raman spectrum. On the right hand, yes. Sorry. In this in this case, the Raman is the perfect technique for polymorph. Yeah, for polymers, for chemicals, chemis chemicals, for minerals, for uh, say like example, this is the uh, inorganic, you know. Uh, organic oxide, like titanium oxide, it's beautiful trace. You look at this trace; it's just beautiful. It's easy, and they produce every time. Those are unique to the molecules, so it's like a fingerprint for the molecules. So you look at those three peaks, at those three reference emitted, then this is titanium oxide for sure. And you look at the bottom one; this is the calcium carbonate. Same thing, you know. You have five uh, peaks on it, or five spectra on it. And yeah, if you look at this, yeah, this is like a mass spec trace. It's more, it's and more it's beautiful to tell you this is carbon carbonate, uh, calcium carbonate. But near infrared, it's just like a, a mountain, you know, a hill. Uh, and it's very difficult to do. 
and also very, very difficult to quantify them. This one is easy to quantify. Look at the height of the intensity. Then this is reproducible too. So you could look at the height and calculate the height of intensity. Uh, then you could uh, get quantification uh, by using the internal standard, not even a calibration curve. So you're making 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, and uh, up to 100%. And you generate that calibration curve just like chromatography uh, method. And then you could compare the peak high relative to the amount or the concentration of, say, sample components in there. Okay? Okay, okay, I understand. All right, so then if you see the organic compounds, same thing, you know? So Raman is very, very, uh, a lot of uh, emission of the reference of, from the molecule itself. And you could easily identify them, uh, like drugs, we will show you a lot of examples later. But you look at the alien forest, you basically just give you a lot of hill, you know, body and hill, which doesn't really be able to do, uh, just like, you know, what I want to see in HPLC, you want to see sharp peaks, you know, you want to see Gaussian peaks, you know. And Raman give you the same spectrum. So allow you to identify them easily and to quantify them easily. Just like chromatography, HPLC, you know, uh, area called, in HPLC you, you are measuring the area but in Raman, we, we just basically measure the peak height, okay? And uh, we select one of them and measure it because the stretch height is the same ratio-wise, they are the same. So this is uh, in compared to other techniques. The, the infrared, you can see, you know, in active scan 1500, all those are, you know, okay. So we, we uh, kind of, a lot of features. And so you could uh, read this after, you know, the seminar and then because you're going to get a uh, copy of this with my uh, voice on it, and then you could uh, see in detail uh, in your own leisure time. So, chromatography method is HPLC method, and of course, you know, HPLC is very good for complex samples. Say you have 10 components, 20 components, 50 components in that mixture, then HPLC is the best method to do, and because you could do the separation into individual components, you can use using UV or Raman spectroscopy to detect them or using mass spec to detect them. So again, for the complex sample, HP is, HPLC is, is, is the only way or the best way to do it. Raman and near infrared, if you have only a few components, say, in drug productions, you don't have one ingredient or two ingredients in it, other than, you know, all the other just as, just a feeder, you know, which doesn't have these bounds. So in this case, then Raman is the best way to do it, very quick. So you don't have to go to HPLC to get those three components separate and then to quantify those three components. Raman can do that easily because you don't have, you know, you could do the spectral analysis and then resolve three uh, spectrum uh, in one of the combined spectrum and then you could identify not only them, but also you could quantify those three components in this, but just doing spectral analysis. We have the software, but I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so if you have very simple compounds or mixtures, say drugs, then you don't have to do anything. You don't, don't have to go through extraction, the grind the uh, drug tablets, and then dissolve in solutions, and then extract it out, filter it out, and then go to HPLC. It could take you a, a lot of process, you know, could cause you a lot of error because all the handheld, you know, hand, hand uh, manipulations of your sample, and so contamination, and you have to have a, a standard there to do it. In in Raman, you don't need to do any of that. It's just non-destructive. Yes, please. Uh, yes. Could you speak uh, more slow because? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Let me. <laughs> Sorry. My okay, English me, is, is, is not very good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And also at the end of the talk, you can uh, you can open your uh, web exchange, mm -hmm. and then there is a they will send you a uh, a like a link to uh, hear this uh, seminar again. Mm -hmm. So that will be in your email. So they will send to you uh, probably. You know, about one hour from uh, we finish the uh, the meeting here. Okay, so no, no, no problem. No problem. So let me uh, slow down on this. So in a way, 
HPLC, again, is the best technique for analyzing complex sample. Sample has, you know, 20 components on it, or 100 yeah. components, or 1,000 components on it. You can use an HPLC columns to separate them and to identify them with UV or and then with mass spec to do it. Guaman is best, the best in terms of the cost, in terms of the simplicity, in terms of the easiness and reliability for handling simple mixture like drops, like a pigment, you know, food additive. We uh, need in, we in need drink. A special codon for chromatography methods? Pardon me, I didn't hear well. Could you repeat uh, that again? No, for for the HPLC uh, okay. Raman. Okay. When when we use the the techniques, we need mm -hmm. a, a special column, or yes. uh, or it was the same the same column that uh, we use in different uh, techniques because the C um, one eight column uh, mm -hmm. is possible use for UV um, detector or Raman detector. Is it the yes. same or need mm -hmm. a special column? No, same column. So same HPLC uh, mm -hmm. is just a separation tool, and then the UV detector is just a detector. MASTEC is also a detector of HPLC. So instead of combining UV and MASTEC together to get identifications, you could put a Raman detector at the end of columns, so when it gets through the Raman detector flow cell, then it will give you identification right away. UV oh. cannot give you identification. UV just give you a signal that mm -hmm. there's something come through, a you know, the UV lights. That's all. Okay, okay. Have you any any experience uh, use the Raman detector with the uh, LC spectrometer mass? We have, in our own uh, laboratory, our own productions, we have developed a Raman detector for HPLC. So mm -hmm. that's our product, that's our product. No one in the world doing, using it. We doing it, uh, produce it for HPLC. We are the first company and the only company produce Raman detector for HPLC detection. Ah, okay, because okay. you have to build the detector, you have to build the so-called data analysis software to handle the data to give you the amount, the detention time, so like a three dimensional now. So one dimension would be the detention time, the other dimension is the spectrum, and then the third dimension would be the signal intensity, like the height. So then, then we in our software we analyze that and tell you, okay, what that spectrum represents. Is it the acetaminophen or the aspirin or something else? Mm -hmm. okay. And then, uh, so you don't need to go into mass spectrometer connected to LCMS to get the identification because we compare like 17,000 spectrum in the lab and tell you what your unknown compound is. But in most of the cases, you know, you can build your own library too. Say, you produce uh, A compounds, then you save uh, those library spectrum, uh, your spectrum in the library, and then you compare to whatever unknown or this, the chemical uh, comes through your detector, and uh, with that library, you just create it. So you don't have to license you know, the library at all. You can create your own library, spectrum library, and then compare against that then it will tell you, okay, this is component A, and this component B, and this component C. So mm -hmm. in many pharmaceutical company, they and food company, they want to keep their chemical, chemical or chemistry proprietary, it's secret. They don't want their competitor knows, you know, how to put it in there and the among of it. So that's the best way, you know, so we allow the user to view their own library so they don't have to uh, share that to the other, you know, uh, public. Okay. 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 I understand. All right. So let me go into the next one. Is the 
compare the cost and time. So this is very important. In HPLC, you have to a lot of prior preparations. You have to uh, grind that coverage after the finished production. And then you have to dissolve that in acetonitrile or methanol or some other solvents. And then you have to filter them out and you have to concentrate them and you have to inject into HPLC and then you have to pump it through the column. You have to develop a method to separate them, separate them and then use an UV detector or mass spectrometer to detect them and to quantify them. So this is a very elaborated and very costly process. Each analysis if you involve mass spectrometer, it costs you $150 per analysis if you send to someone to service for you. And uh, if you have the in-house, then you have to maintain the instruments, you have to have the techni uh, expert technicians to run your HPLC and to analyze your data. So all those are very costly uh, proposal. So HPLC also is slow, very, very slow. Even you have the method developed, you know, after one week or two weeks, develop the methods, but then you should transfer that to QC department. And then it could take 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get one analysis done. So normally, after you send a sample into the LC laboratory or quality control QC laboratory, it usually takes 24 hours for them to turn around. So it's already too late. You know, whatever you produced yesterday, uh, you decide, okay, you want to discard it or you want to keep it. You know, it's this specification. So that kind of information is very, very slow coming. And since it's very slow, plus it's very costly, so usually they take only 1% of the sample. Say you produce 100 tablets, you take one tablet and send it to QC lab and that's not enough. So I test quite a lot of bubbles of uh, over-the-counter drugs in my own shop right now, and they are about 25% of the tablets doesn't meet 10% tolerance. So say FDA requires say plus minus 10% is the tolerance you, you cannot over. But if you take a look at the data we produce from many manufacturers of drugs, they are about 25% of drug tablets. Say you test 100 tablets, there are 25 tablets that doesn't meet the specification at all. Some are very high dosage, some are very low dosage. Because during the mixing process, they doesn't mix well at all. So they get that uh, bucket of two kilograms or two tons of drug tablets. After they mix together, they go to make it into the tablets. And that could cause in a lot of non-uniformity in the distribution of the drug ingredient inside each tablet. So there could be very high tablets uh, in active ingredient and some of very low active ingredient. And that is not a, a that doesn't meet you know the FDA requirements at all today. But uh, no one uh, generated this kind of issue, you know. So they just oh one percent is enough. I got data to prove, you know, for that test one percent, it means that. But actually, they are not. You know, if you test 100 percent, then you can see 25 percent doesn't meet specification at all. So that's one of the big issues. So the one of the you know we send uh, some of the data to the drug company and uh, to let them know, hey, you know, your drug we bought it from this uh, lot number doesn't meet specs, and we have data to prove it. So this will, this will become since we have a method to test it now, we have the instrumentation to test it now. We don't want to go through HPLC, going to cost you that much money to test it. Now it will be an issue. So this will become a, 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 a issue, you know, to be raised in the in drug industry. And uh, then in terms of the analysis, if you have one thousand samples need to be tested, then for the HPLC, the number one is the HPLC, one thousand sample times twenty five minutes per sample, then it'll be twenty five thousand minutes. It equal to about 17.36 days. Means either you have to buy 20 instruments, HPLC instrument, to test it, you know, to have one day turnaround, or you just have one HPLC instrument, you have to spend 17.36 days to finish this 1,000 tablets. Okay, so for the IQ scan, 1,000 each 
have will take one minute or even less. If we do a quick scan, it takes less than one minute. So you times 60 and then divided by 24 hours, then you only 0.7 days. So in one day, we could finish 1,000 tablets. But for HPLC, you have to have 17 days to do it or 18 days to do it. So in a way, you could see one accuracy scan 1500 is equal to about 20 HPLC system. So you have to do a lot of investment in terms of the uh, the person managing or operating the 20 HPLC. You can just one person managing 20 HPLC. You have to have higher probably at least 10 person. So you have the salary, you have the overhead, you have the solvent used, you have the preparation of the sample, you have to develop methods, and all that is going to cost you a lot of money. In HPLC, in scan, you don't need to. We just put the tablet in the tray we, we, put, we provided, uh, say 96 oil or 384 oils, and you can go through this, and you don't even have to do anything. You just put the tray there, so you don't have to have an expert technician at all or scientist. You just have a regular technician, you know, pay uh, normal wages. And so your cost, and you don't need solvent, you don't have, need columns. You don't need spatial column at all. Just in there, the library, the, the AccuScan system will tell you, okay, you miss, you know, it's a, the same identity is acetaminophen, you know, or aspirin drugs, after okay. ingredient. And then also it could tell you, okay, are you meeting the content uniformity uh, requirement within 10% or not? So you could discuss, you know, those, uh, uh, you could assure that, hey, all the production we have, uh, so like Japan right now, they require uh, all the drug meeting the 100% the testing, that's in Japan. And so China is kind of follow, in a couple of years, they follow the same uh, same test requirement now. So you have to test 100% of all the drug tablets. But HPLC, if that's a method, then it'll be in deep trouble because not only there will be, you know, they've got 10,000 10, 10, HPLC system in the bin, in the laboratory, in the QC lab. But also, you have to consume a lot of organic solvents, and they're going to be costly, and they're causing a lot of environmental issue. Okay, so if you look at this the time consuming for 1,000 tablets, you need to test it in one day, you cannot. The Roman is the only way you could do it within one day. And then cost wise, if you, same thing, you know, 1,000 samples. So HPOC solvent, you could spend uh, 25,000 milliliter. So they equal about you know six seven gallons of organic say acetyl nitrile. It, each gallon costs you one hundred dollars. Then it costs in six hundred twenty five dollars just you know to analyze this one thousand sample. And then you have to go through waste management too. So it costs you five hundred dollars for the waste management to to burn up you know or to to discard those uh, one thousand you know all those twenty five thousand uh, or seven gallon of uh, solvents. And then the consumable, you have to do uh, you know, the piston seal, columns, uh, maintain the equipment, uh, and then you have to do a lot of uh, solvents, uh, sort of like uh, extracting devices. All this, you know, costs you $1,500 to do this. And personal salary plus overhead, which costs you 7, uh, 37, uh, 3,700. So you add all this up. Your total operation for thousand sample it costs you six thousand four hundred twelve dollars, which is cheap. You know, if you send it out to a laboratory to analyze for you, you don't have a big laboratory, you don't have enough resources like small company, uh, drug company, or food company. Then it it's much more than that because each sample you go to mass spectrometry, then it costs you hundred fifty dollars per sample. For HPLC, it could cost you $60 to $120 per sample, depends on how many components in there. Okay, so this is the minimum you're going to spend is $6,004. So basically, like $65, uh, $6 per sample, $6 per sample. This is very cheap, very cheap. Normally, it costs you $60 per sample. So if you do, do 1,000 sample, it could cost you much, much more than that. That's in the US. And then for acute scan, $1 per sample. So 1,000 sample is costing $1,000 or less because, you know, we, we, I, I, we, yes. Uh, 
Okay. Is there is there uh, any any methodology or um, uh, approved by the FE, FDA um, whereby mm. companies accept the the results? Uh, sorry, uh, I couldn't hear. You. Could you repeat it again? Something is kind of the ball is kind of scattering. Is the, is there any any methodology or um, laboratory um, no results results approved by FDA? Mm. FDA food, uh, Jure, can you hear better? Uh, yeah. Repeat that method that question, Jure. Yes, Dr. Young. Uh, oh, okay. Mr. So, uh, ask us. in the laboratory, usually we just using the 96 oil. A oil costs about somewhere around two dollars US, and you can use in that for 96 sample. No, I I I don't understand me because okay, it's yeah, not because I didn't hear. It's not problem okay. the cost. Is is not problem the cost. Okay. My my, my question. Is a point to the uh, regulations. Regulations, okay. Okay? okay. FDA, oh, FDA. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regulation. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Is there any any um, regulation approved the Raman? Uh, um, is the the result by HPC is the same uh, result, but they re, uh, Raman. You understand me? Yeah, uh -huh, okay. FDA approved, have approved government as the dog material testing equipment or the method. They prefer actually the choice for FDA and that's in the pharmacopoeia, uh, like, uh, you know, drug assurance, you know, analysis methods. So that's been, been, been defined. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, in the in terms of the uh, FDA approval of the depressing HPLC, using Roman to depress HPLC, uh, it's not okay because HPLC is still going to be there, but Roman is an assurance tool for manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So during the production quality, the production process, not the end, not at the very end, the call QC. We talk about QA, quality assurance. So in the production plane or the, the uh, uh, floor, then they already do their uh, control of the assure that all the drug goes through that is okay. Mm -hmm. Then they send just one tablet to the QC laboratory to assure that to fulfill the FDA requirement. But you know, when you test in the in the over the counter drug, you would hear you will realize they are ten percent, twenty percent, not meeting the specs. Mm -hmm. But okay. you know how the drug company could be could feel comfortable uh, not to get sued or got to get pulled down from the from the over the counter, uh, which is a big risk, you know, for the pharmaceutical company that they're not testing hundred percent of them, and uh, some of them have over the specs or lower than the specification. So those are the issue. We call a quality assurance. So for the drug company to assure that all the drugs they produce meeting their tolerance, you know, FDA required ten percent plus minus ten percent, and then meeting that requirement instead of after yeah they could produce it or do one percent according to FDA uh, guideline, one to three percent according to FDA guideline, and uh, I'm meeting that. I get data to prove it. Yeah, that that could be just meeting the paperwork, and they have to do that too. So basically, drug company have to do the QA, uh, QC, uh, mm -hmm. it is right now to meet mm -hmm. that FDA requirement, but then assure that they produce drugs all meeting, everyone meeting the state. So actually, you know, they could uh, save it all the time and money because they cannot set 100%, 1,000 tablets to the level to, to take testing. They, they will have to equip thousands, thousands of different HPOC systems running the same test day and night, and that's impossible. There's too much cost for the drug company, and that's FDA cannot, you know, uh, will get brain for that. Say, you know, you want us to do all the tests with HPLC, and it cost me 60, you know, $60 to do it. It's impossible for me 
I, I had to sell that drug, you know, to two thousand dollars a piece. Not like, nice. you know, two dollars. It it tapers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a different, you know, so I just want to you know, kind of bring up that issue. The cost-wise, it's just too much cost for the drug company to implement that that regulations. But no, you better no, but, do it. Uh, my my question: um, uh, Have the intention that the um, uh, the problem is on the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. problem is the regulation? Yes. 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 But, in other companies, no problem. Your mm -hmm. your uh, your propo uh, proposal is is, mm -hmm. is good because mm -hmm. uh, the, the the money is money. <laughs> it's good. It's good. But in the pharmaceutical industry, the problem mm -hmm. is regulation. Re uh, replace the the HPLC is not yeah. it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. It's, it's not the company because. Uh, uh, foods, no problem, no problem, but no regulation, yeah. Or, yeah. It, yeah. or the regulation is 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 easy, it is easy, no no problem. Yeah. Uh, the cost mm -hmm. is the is is good, is good. Mm -hmm. uh, then in yeah. the pharmaceutical, it's that's what we working with FDA right now, and we working with the forensic institute also to bring this equipment for them to take a look at it and uh, for them to uh, approve it. We. Our software does meet the FDA Part 11, CFR part, uh, 21 Part 11 uh, mm -hmm. compliance. We have that compliance already. And so in a way that it could be a replacement for HPLC for drug company if they're just using it because it does comply with the FDA CFR Part 11. Okay, okay. that's in our design, meet that. And so okay. if the drug company bring the data to the FDA say, yeah, we just, you know, meet the compliance regulation wise, you know, from uh, data handling point of view, from the method, from the method uh, assurance point of view, yeah, all for that minute, you know, and also the, 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 you know, the label of authority, say administrator or director or operator, all that, you know, have their own uh, label of, uh, of, of you know, kind of can they go in their method changes or changing parameters? All oh. that is saved in the in the logbook. Okay. So that's done. So, so you know, in a way, uh, this method at the moment, yeah, you need the compliance, but it doesn't get sort of say okay. You know, it's it's uh, certified by FDA, but that that could be coming soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And for the industry. And for the chemical industry, yeah, they don't need to worry about FDA. Then for to produce uh, coconut oils or sunflower oils, uh, they produce uh, uh, you know seeds. All this could be tested with our system to assure that the oil come in to you know produce from their factory at the same ingredient, or uh, same 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 product, uh, same amount of of composition concentration wise. So they don't have to go a truck or one ton, one one ship of uh, of oil going to uh, Taiwan or going to US, and they got uh, sort of you know dejected, and the the ship had to the the ship had to return around, you know, return it because it doesn't meet the specification or the the sample they receive. For example, in Taiwan right now, uh, we work with the company uh, sell import oil from uh, Argentina, from uh, Brazil, from India, say sunflower oil. And so yeah. the sunflower company will send them a sample to test it. And that sample, uh, of course, they test with HPLC. Okay. But if you test with Roman, the system we have, that's what they're using today, then they get a spectrum of the sample they're coming in. So they store that in a library. So when the truck comes in from uh, from this company in uh, in Argentina to Taiwan, then before they unload the, the uh, you know 50 gallon can of maybe 100 can of them, then they test it in like couple minutes. They could tell you, okay, your sunflower 
all your have this extra contaminants in it. And either you have to certify that this contaminant is okay, doesn't affect my productions or my quality of uh, sunflower oil, or you have to take it back. Or you have to guarantee that that is come from the seasonal change of the sunflower oil and doesn't affect my so that could be quickly decided. In a couple of minutes, it decided to the truck driver, you take it back or you sign this signature down there. You'll be responsible for uh, the quality of the sunflower you send me. Well, they send it 95% sunflower oil, but 5% cotton oil in it. Then you can see cotton oil contaminant in there. Or you can see the benzene you know, uh, contamination oil in the, in the oil in a couple of minutes. And you could tell the drug, drug, uh, truck driver, you turn all that to the ship, you know, send it back to Argentina or send it back to, to India or to China. So uh -huh. it's very easy, you know. So in a way, you assure the quality of the product, the best way to do it, without causing you anything at all. It's just a, one of the 96 oil, plastic oil, that's all. And so uh, that's, you know, that's why I kind of say this product is very useful for uh, QA, control quality assurance of the product producer, chemical producers, uh, oil producer, food producer, food additive producer, and for the drug company to detect their raw material, they come in from uh, Roman has or from um, Pratt and Gamble. You know, all this has become useful. And for the drinking company, uh, food drinks, they put a pigment in it to change it into the strawberry color or change it into the uh, orange color. But it's it's too edited, it's color, it's, it's a pigment. So you could detect that also very quickly with our machine and without causing much at all. Okay. So is that okay now? So let me come in again. So those are the available Roman uh protein spectrum database. So basically you uh the customer will be licensed and come from us, you know, through from BioRed, that's called Noid or you know, software. Uh, from ST Japan, uh, that's from Simon Fisher. So there, if you say uh, producing uh, solvent or say food, food additive, for example, second line here, you can see there are 1,000 spectrum of food additive, say pigments, uh, say polymers, they are in this category. So you only have to license uh, this, food library, this library database then you will be able to know what, you know, food additive they added into from HPLC or from our system and what, what's, what's there, you know, what's, what's in their, in their pigment or in their uh, food additive or from their oil, cooking oil, something like that. So do they have benzene in there or do they have toluene in there or do they have, uh, you know, cotton oils in there? So Hello, very Mr. easy, Mr. yes? Mr. Asensio is gone for a break. He just sent us a text message here. Oh, okay, okay. Apparently, he needs a bathroom break, so he's Okay, okay. Here. Can you give me uh, five minutes, please? Okay, uh, sure. Okay, go ahead, please. Five minutes, five minutes return. Yes? Okay, please. yes. Okay, yeah. yes. Sorry. All right. Thanks. Meanwhile, Frank, I got uh, a meeting set up here for the other guy. He requested a change to tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay, tomorrow, 11 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, your time? That's, that's our, our time, central time. You're at central time. Okay, central time. time. Okay. Talk about the Roman application spectral database. So, customer can order from Violet or from ST Japan, the thermal, or mm -hmm. order from us. And all, all, the database, all the database is possible as a, um, a cell with the instrument? Yes, uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. And so we could uh, uh, put that in the instruments. Basically, we were, uh, the instrument come with the notebook. In the notebook, we have the methods and we have database. Okay. And so mm -hmm. it depends on the customer. If they are in the food industry, then they, they will be have food additive and food packaging spectral database will be in it. If they are in the Easter, you know, lectons or those, you know, or alcohol industry, then they will get the other database. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So that's what offers is possible update. Is is possible update frequently? Yes, yeah, they update automatically. Ah, they update, update automatically. Uh -huh. okay. uh, because every day is through internet these days. So even our instrument, if you in uh, Argentina, uh, our engineer could uh, take over your instruments. If you allow us to get, you know, the password, if he send us password, we go into the team view and we could work with uh, the scientists or engineer in in their company and then help them out or help them out. Okay, do the method okay. development with for them. So everything uh, will be kind of remote control or communications. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the powerful tools we have. So anywhere in the world, we, as long as you have internet connections, we could uh, work with you on on running the equipment for you, or develop the method for you, or troubleshooting or do whatever service. And upload, you know, uh, or download the new software, upgraded software. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. what uh, we have. Okay, let's go into the uh, next slide is talk about the industry we are focusing today. Is pharmaceutical company for the raw material, for the intermediate product, say in the mixer chamber, they could take a, a sample, the mixing chamber, chamber sample from there and then put it in our system to identify during the production process that the mixing complete or not. As you do spin that that uh, mixer for 25 minutes, or uh, for 35 minutes, or 40 minutes, you know. So you could decide by look at the data. Uh, so before you form a <laughs> non-recoverable drug tablet, mm -hmm. you have a chance to see. Okay, my mixing chamber is perfect. I allow them 40 minutes, then they mixing 100% well. Then when they produce that drug at the end, then 100% will meet this the assurance of the quality. Instead of they don't know what happened in the mixer chamber, mm -hmm. in the two ton chamber, or is a two kilogram chamber. So it depends on the size of the chamber, the mixing chamber. The time requirement and also the speed requirement, they're all different. So you cannot just follow SOP. And so uh, without knowing the mixing chamber complete or not, then you make it to make it into the tablets, there are many chances that you are causing a lot of consistency uh, ingredient content uniformity issue. And it'll be too late, you know. So either you discard or to keep two kilograms of the drugs or you, you turn two tons of drugs. And then uh, <laughs> otherwise you will take a chance that, you know, FDA discover you're over the counter, uh, inspect that and they find out, okay, you're 10% not meeting the inspect. They could ask you, they could give a big fine because you sell kind of, you basically kind of fit drugs now. You don't meet the specs. And that's very dangerous. You can, uh, sorry, doctor. You can okay. you, uh, measure online monitoring. Uh, how um, how do it do the 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 monitor online? Is possible integrate the the instrument to the process? Yes, that's what we are developing right now. So next year we are actually we are working with one of the uh, counter tablet counter uh, manufacturer in Taiwan. We we'll develop a module which will be uh, integrated with their line. So when the tablet got formed from the uh, the forming machine, making mm -hmm. tablet machine, then we go to the counter. You know during the sessions. After they have they uh, remove the uh, the dust, you know, then everything will be looked at. So there are twelve, say twelve lines, but just in lines uh, go through the counter. Then we will count, we are detected there. So at the moment, my recommendation is that okay, you using my own machine, and then take the sample from the mixing chamber after you spin for twenty five minutes, and you mm -hmm. test it. Does it meet specs? So and it quickly in thirty minutes you got everything done. Pretty much, you know, you could test uh, 1,000, uh, 100, basically 100 uh, sample, you could test it, you know, in 30 minutes. And then, mm -hmm. also before, say, the tablet, forming the tablet, then before they go into the counter, you could pick, you know, say 100 tablets from the line before they into the bottle. And then go to the test again. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and then you could define, okay, those are good or bad, before you get to the bottle and package it up. Okay. Okay. So that's what we, we suggest uh, the customer to do today. But because we need to work with the, uh, the tablet manufacturers, to, because of their, their connections, like the nuts and bolts, you know, the size of their, their system, so we basically have to work with them to develop this uh, machine together. Okay. But that will be the machine we are working on right now, try to get into like the online uh, monitoring. And so we have a, have a dejection uh, kind of uh, uh, pedal, you know, they have to kick the drugs out. All right. So they don't have to worry about it, you know, in the, in the hunting device. So you look at that, we are cosmetics is also very powerful. We could, Look at the cosmetics, you know, say lipsticks. Uh, are they making uh, counterfeit lipsticks, you know, from Lebanon or from uh, acid odor? And those uh, could be a signature, like a fingerprint for these lipsticks, you know, number 820, for example, or, you know, 740, you know, the, the number, the protection dot number, 740. So they produce it today and they could compare to what they produced two months ago. And they could see are they special on the fingerprint the same. And the, the material that comes in, uh, they're expensive. They're perfuming stuff, you know, very expensive. Can they, they also test the raw material to identify uh, what are those ingredients, expensive ingredients, you know, are they the same or are they different now? They have contaminants or whatever they have in there. So this is very easy and they don't destroy the this, this, this ingredient too. They don't destroy the lipsticks. You just Wipe a lipstick on a piece of paper and put it into under our machine. Then now you can identify that uh, lipstick. You know, we don't have to go through the sample preparations. To do ion chromatography with this lipstick is very very tough because it's a, it's a lot of uh, you know lubricants in there and a lot of other ingredients. There are 15 ingredients in there, and so it is not an easy process. So to prepare the sample for like one day or more before you can get it to go into the HPLC or the going to ion chromatography. So, uh, but to us, it takes less than a couple of minutes, less than two minutes. Then you can identify what the signature of the lipsticks. Does it come from this company or come from the company or come from this page or come from that page? So you can have a quality assurance uh, right away. Okay. So okay. the food. One moment, yes. uh, Dr. Yang. Yes. Did you remember to mention that our Accuscan 1500 can also analyze samples that are in the packaging, like lipsticks in a transparent container or yeah, any uh, that raw material? Yes, those are in the kind of transparent, uh, uh, and also the tablet you had the coating on it, say yellow coating on it, or you know orange coating on it. You can go through it, say you know like uh, acetylene, 81 milligram. Uh, that's coating with the outside is a is a yellow coating tablets or mm -hmm. orange coating tablets. Yeah, you could go through that, no problem. So actually, you could peel that that the orange coating off and take a look at the the white you know uh, powders inside compared to without doing it, you got the same spectrum and same intensity. So no problem at all. Okay, for the plastic bag in the container, say raw material, uh, anything can pass. Uh, the laser light through the red light mm -hmm. through it, then no yeah, no problem. No yeah, problem. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, yes, I understand. Uh, through yeah. through the through the back. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to to take the bag, you yes, know, yes. and like I, HPLC, I, I, HPLC, HPLC to take it out. Blister packaging or or yeah, or the, mm -hmm. the back. And the yeah. as long as you have the trans transparent, you know, uh, plastic, is it, it's okay. Is necessary is necessary calibrate for the 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 polymers of the bag? Yeah, we could remove it. Our background could be removed in our software. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Uh, it will be you we will do in a software I'll show you in a minute, you know, what, what can be done. And that's uh, that's a software uh, capability to remove the background from uh, the trace. So you will see the, the active ingredients, you know, instead of the background. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So the food industry, we are selling a lot to the food industry. 
because in Asia. One question. One question. Yes. Okay. Is, uh, uh, how is the um, validation method for the instrument? Uh, is necessary a standard uh, external standards? Uh, is necessary calibrate? Or uh, is necessary in any any tools for validate the instruments? Okay, there are, okay two questions there. One is that to validate it, you know, so there are various two functions. One is identify them. So those are based on the library uh, spectrum. You can compare the library, and so it's a acetaminophen. So they will tell you that right away. And this it also will also give you the identification, give you the data to report it to you. Say, okay, there are all the hundred tablets. They are acetaminophen. Okay, that's one. And number two is the amount. Okay, like validated the content uniformity. That's amount. That's quantifications. So if you want to calculate the amount of samples in there, then you have to have a calibration curve. Say you making a sample, uh, say hundred percent of uh, acetaminophen. And then divide by half, 50% acetaminophen, 35% acetaminophen, 4.5%, 5%, 3%, 2%, 1%. Then you make a curve, calibration but curve like HPLC, and then you store, is, yes. But this, this is the calibrate for a, in one component. Yeah, one compound, say yeah. acetaminophen, but yes. The, uh -huh. the, the, the question is, for the instrument, the instrument, uh -huh. which is the method for okay. validate or qualification of the okay. instrument. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the or a uh, yes, you understand? Okay. Me? Yeah, I know. So this is this is I saw the second question you have is that for the instrument calibrations, we calibrate our optics, say the pixel or the CCD. Based on the say uh, the zirconium oxide, you know the the the, the transition metal oxide. So those are very gallium oxide, for example, in the factory. Mm -hmm. And we will send customer a piece of silicon oxide. They will come out at 520 nanometer, and among you know say the signal will be say uh, 2,500. So we give you a uh, both for the intensity and also the pixel or the weight number, and that will be in your start kit. And they could using that to calibrate the signal uh, in terms of wavelength and in terms of intensity. Or in the program itself, it could allow you to calibrate against your own uh, sample. Say you have tolerant, for example, and then or you have uh, in our case, you know, we give you. Say a, a, a example in our software is the IPA isopropyl alcohol. There are total about nine peaks on it, and then mm -hmm. we have a pixel to web number uh, standard number we have. Okay, so then we compare with that and adjust the pixel against the web number, and then we give you calibrate to the absolute same number, so you produce the same. Spectrum every time. So this one, we would do the calibration. So user could store the toluene if they produce a toluene in their factory. They store the toluene spectrum. You know when you get the equipment, and then store that web numbers and then the uh, the parameters. Say they are all coexistent. They will calculate it out, and then you will you will enter the pixel number, the web number there, and uh, from the result you have, and then you. Uh, the computer will calculate the coefficient, correlation coefficient for you, by the way, and you enter those correlation coefficient, then it will be calibrated against you know, whatever you had before, say one year ago or you know, two years ago. So mm -hmm. those are the way to calibrate, you know, uh, validate your instrumentation in terms of weight number produced. Is it the same as the one year ago or as you know, what it's supposed to be? Okay? So this view inside the software. So we basically give you two ways. One is give you a silicon oxide to carry against uh, the wave number and the, the intensity. 
and there's only one line. So very, very simple. Okay, and then you know, give you a... I understand, but in okay. a... No, okay, okay, okay. Continue, see. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah. okay. So, that's, uh, so right now we are focusing on those markets, as you can see on the screen right now. Is the food and food contaminations, the oil, oil contaminations, the cooking oil. And the, because, you know, some of the cooking oil, they want to reduce the cost of the cooking oil, they add cotton oil in it. So it's not sunflower 100%. They, <laughs> they give you some oil which is, doesn't have the same 100% same oil in it. It has cotton oil. Cotton oil is very, very cheap. And so it's very critical. Uh, and the people got, got sick, you know, because they, they take cotton oil. And then kind of fit, you know, kind of define, okay, this is uh, a, a $20,000 wine or this is a uh, $2 wine, you know. So uh, again, that's a that's an area of the focus of the company right now. Okay, so this is the area uh, I hope it, uh, in, in, in Argentina, you will find many, many customers are in this kind of category, you know, and we can support you with a lot of data for this. So you could uh, see how, you know, uh, we could give you a technical uh, data to prove that, you know, it could be useful for that uh, particular drugs or particular chemical or particular cosmetics or particular food additive oil, you know, come from a country. Okay. So now let's get into the next one. Is the one uh, in industry right now, raw material identification, people using ramen, the handheld system, like you see this part before. I know, also I know. The, go through that, okay. So, but this will only give you yes and no. But can you trust this yes and trust this is no? If this is a com com component, is a mixture, then the yes and no is 50-50. You name or no, it's going to tell you yes or tell you no. Because when you compare to the library data, <laughs> because they cannot identify, you know, library yes. data 100%. It's not pure. I, I know, I know the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> you know the equipment, right? So, okay. you know, tell you the uh, data which is produced by the uh, Institute of Forensic Science. Mm -hmm. This is a government uh, agency, national. So you compare, there are four handheld systems. I always say this is a joke, you know. So the price-wise, yeah, you ranging from uh, twenty thousand to fifty thousand from Silver Finnegan, okay, or to thirty thousand, you know, from the other company, and those are commercial available. But yeah, you pay fifty thousand dollars for a toys, you know, I classify those as toys because for pure components, pure components, even thermal system, the green one, only give you eighty percent, eighty-eight percent of assurance. Yeah, when you tell you yes. Yeah, eighty percent, eighty-eight percent chance they say yes. Yeah, it is true. It is that component because in the library, when you compare this to the library, uh, there could be extra picks on it. You know, from the data you, the sample you tested. So you may well tell you, okay, hundred uh, percent meat. Okay. So mm -hmm. the other company only fifty percent meat. The component only pure components still tell you that. So this is ridiculous. You know, how, how can you have fifty percent error? You tell yes, it could be no. You tell no, it could be yes. So this is terrible equipment. So it is worse than a toys for scientists. And then for mixture, say you have two component mixture compound, then even thermal could I tell you, oh, we got 100% mix, uh, matched, 100% sure that is that component. Can, because it's mixture. So it cannot be that, mix, that simple. So this is, uh, and then for explosive, yeah, thermal doing better. You know, they get 80% assurance. The other company only 20% sure that's left explosive. Man, that's dangerous, isn't it? So this is a, a, a toy, you know, handheld system is a toy. But for raw material in the drug company, that's okay, you know, because they are pure and they have diver to compare to the signature. And so they could say, okay, this is uh, acetaminophen or this is aspirin or this is insulin, you know. So those are okay, but, you know, that's all they can do. So this kind of machine, I would say, you spend fifty thousand dollars for it in a thermal unit, and you could, you know, just testing the raw material. One application, one use. You, it is strong, cannot kill tubers. You know, cannot tell you quantitatively how much is it is this, and what, you know, what the uh, what the uh, the machine uh, do. Okay. So and for near infrared, that's even worse. You have to when the size is different, then you have to you have to do a calibration curve 
for this size, you know, when the size change, you have the calibration curve for the other size. And when it's a ceramic, you know, uh, uh, bake, you know, which is this thickness and that thickness. Again, you have to do all the calibration. Raman, you don't need to do it, just one calibration, that's it, okay? The signal intensity is proportional to the amount of the chemical inside, okay? So this is with the proof, our machine is highly reproducible from the spectra wave number point of view. So for easy to identify the sample ID, and we also had to make sure that it quantitatively, it could be spectral intensity is also reproducible. So how we prove that? So for example, we're testing 96 oil, say it's a ceramic oil, 96 oil, right? It, uh, polystyrene oil. So we're testing that, and this 96 oil, we just mount in, you know, test from one oil to the other, goes through 96 oil of them. And after that, we overlay those 96 traces, spectrum, together, and you can see they are one trace, one single trace. If you do an HPLC 96 one, retaining time against the, the height or the area, you're not gonna see any of this. It's impossible to do it, okay? But for Raman, our system, we could do this. 96 one or the polystyrene plastic uh, container, then we get produced 0.65 relative standard deviation of the height. Say we mark it on this one. So we calculate the height of this one. They are 0.64% uh, error. So it's almost like, you know, 99% sure. Yeah, that's the amount, okay? And then uh, we, of course, the wave number is the same. So show you the real data. This is produced uh, both last year and this year. This year we produced this at the, uh, and then if you look at, you know, the data, this is from 1 to 24, because the paper uh, screen is too small, so we don't want to show the data is too, too thin. So it goes to 24, and you can see this is the weight number, the identity. They are 998.28, all of them, not even a, a, a one-tenth of, uh, one-hundredth of the digit change. So 100% sure, yeah, that's a polystyrene by looking at it. And then this is intensity. 14,706, so you look at the average, 14,662.59, and then we are about 2.5% uh, marker there, and we only 0.64% error, 0.64. So this is fantastic, you know, okay? And then, then of course, this is, the tolerance is, uh, is better than 0.64%. Than, uh, so if you have 10% here, mark for the, Rejections, so we uh, 1,466 here, then of course everything passed. So you can see they are passing it. Even we said at 2%, they are passing also, all of them pass. Because this is flat and, and solid, you know, ceramic, I mean, uh, polystyrene, okay. And the next data, you can see after 48, same thing, 998.28, and it's, you know, uh, again, 14,000, whatever. And third, you know, 72, same thing. Last frame, you know, 96, all of them the same. So you can see our system, because we are using robotic control, everything without men uh, held in the, the, the Roman uh, detector, everything in the dark room, and everything, you know, fully controlled by computer, optimized by computer. So we can get this kind of data. So we have assurance that, yeah, we can get 100% identity, identified it with not 88%. At the same time, we could do very good quantitation, 0.64%, better than 1%, better than HBLC for 110, you know, for 96 tests. So again, so utilize this for high throughput hunter uh, content informative validations. And that's, you know, we could test the drugs after they produce at, in the mixing chamber or the, the uh, oil or whatever. So this is one per two minutes per sample, and then 100 tablets only cost 21 hours, less than one day. Okay. So the beauty of this system is that it doesn't require anything. Data handling, no sample preparation, no solvents, no nothing. So it costs you less than $1 you know, per sample. Okay. And now we are testing drug, the early drug now. EDTA, we are doing 100 drugs testing, and then uh, in a 384 wells, and then you can see after we test in all these 100 drops, this is, you know, powder drops, okay? And we, we put the powder drop in 384 wells, and we just, you know, detect all those 380 wells. 
After that, we put we overlay them together again. They are one single trace. Again, they are very very reproducible for even powder drugs. Okay. So they mix in very well. You know. So we basically take the powder uh, from the gel container and then we put it into the 384 well and then we just you know do, do nothing and just turn the machine on and scan it. That's it. And then produce those traces of uh, signature of uh, EGTA and we over them all together. That's it. You know, as simple as that. And then this is the way we do it. So we take the powders out, put it in the 384 well, and we go through the uh, uh, testing. This is the machine we have. So we put the, you know, the 384 or 96. We have a container uh, or the sample tray based on the customer favorite size. So you could put that, you know, phone in there so they, they won't shake, they don't vibrate, everything is there. So after we put the drug on the, the tray, we command the system to start running, then then we'll play with the moving in and then start to scan. So this is in the room. So the, the everything is fully automated. So just computer by entering go, you know, the scan and then we'll go scanning. And at the end of the scan, you go to say yes and no, then we'll produce okay, those are yes, all of them pass. And only five fail in this sample. Okay. So I'll tell you right away, you know, their content is not uniform. Their content is have fail. So the drug, you know, you look at this position, yeah, drug has fail, and the position drug has fail, and the rest of pass. So this will give you a very good assurance in the production process. Uh, then you don't waste all this, you know, on this two kilogram of, of of drugs in here, which is expensive. Again. Rapid spatial ID for sample identification. So a few examples. So this is uh, acetaminophen, 500 milligram, easy, beautiful trace. But we didn't know the next one. So remember this trace here, okay, single peaks here, and then there's very beautiful peak. We only scan for 0.1 second, 0.1 second at 20 milliwatts. Okay, very, very low energy. Okay, so that doesn't cost you much at all. And uh, because you find milligram in there. But if you look at the next one, it's paracetamol, and they're the same. Yes, go ahead. Doctor, um, is necessary the, the environmental of the room um, for, for the, the instrument? No, um, nothing. Uh, for example, no, I, I can see the instrument is very small. It's yeah, not, it's, it's, it's very small. It's uh, just like uh, an HPLC system, that's all. Size-wise. It, it's yeah. not it's necessary. HPLC, HPLC pump module. Uh, so it's, it's about 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. 35 okay. pounds, but yeah. It's not, that way. it's not a, it's not a necessary a, a condition of the uh, in, uh, environmental of the room. Uh, no. Temperature, no. humidity. Um, no, light. you don't need that. Yeah. It's not no. necessary. Not necessary, yes. Okay. Don't need to do okay. anything. Because, yeah. for example, fast, uh, fast near system need a, a, a lot of conditions for the instrument is uh, yeah. work good. For example, the temperature, the air, the light. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. And even a microscope, you know, you have to turn the lights off. You know, after you you position your your you know into the uh, yeah. into the sample. The, the, Otherwise, the, the light will in a room would 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 affect your data. The, the, in this in this case. The the sample is independent uh, is free of the the operator. Yeah. Because hundred uh, percent is is one position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I understand. Yeah. So it's moving inside, you know, underneath the laser uh, lens. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. So it, it will be you know from the same positions, and uh, so you just go optimize, you know, to the to the best intensity for the sample. Actually, I do have a, a, a uh, kind of video for showing the operation of the system, but today probably don't have enough time to show you that. 
Uh, I usually go through that. That's about 12 minutes, you know, but today will be a little bit short of that. We will do it next time if you really, you know, would like to sign up as a distributor for us. I will, that will be a, an area to show you how it operates, how the whole thing works. Very simple, very easy. And so the, this slide, if I could go ahead, this paracetamol, we didn't know they are the same as the acetaminophen. <laughs> I just look at the, uh, the, the, uh, the S, uh, the American uh, the registry for chemical mm -hmm. drugs, and we find out those two are the same, <laughs> paracetamol. But you look at the structure, I already tell you, yeah, they are the same, you know. So I just scan this, and oh, this is the same as uh, acetaminophen. So I, you don't have to tell me from the books at all. Don't have to go through from copia. <laughs> it, it tells the same amount too, you know, 500 milligrams. <laughs> so, but then they say under different trade names, you know, brand names. And uh, Tylenol, uh, NSN, you know, <laughs> pretty much similar. They all contain either 500 milligram of acetaminophen, but they're using Tylenol as a, as a, as a, you know, name. Okay, but if you look at the chemical, chemical inside, they are the same, and same amount too. And this is uh, like a, you know, this phenylethylene, uh, and this is again, yeah. two, the different name. Yeah, so you can very easily identify them. For prepare yes. for for prepare the sample. For prepare Nothing. the sample. Nothing. Nothing. It's, Nothing it, at all. It's not, it's not necessary uh, wait uh, any uh, any mass for for um, for a standard. No. 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 You don't not need necessary. To. No. Not necessary. It's, you have uh, to have a, you have to have a save the data. Say five hundred milligram of acetaminophen. You save it in the library. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, and then How that's we... that, you know, so you compare to the same intensity under the same conditions, then then it'll be the same. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, just compare the same conditions, there's a power, uh, the scanning time, the number of scan, that's equal to that. Even if you enter those numbers in, a, in a, our table, then the computer software will be covered there for you. Suppose you're doing two scans, your signal will be two times stronger. But you know the library only have one scan, so we'll be doing the self calibration for you. Okay, we we'll reduce the signal by factor two, and then compare that in terms of the amount in there. So the computer will do that for you. And this is the MSM, so a beautiful trace. Look at that trace; it's just you know much better than chromatography. <laughs> and then there's a spectrum, so the signal is very high, so you can get quantitation, very good signal to noise ratio, and you could get that very very easily. So uh, again, you know, this is uh, very easy. Take, you know, a few seconds, you get this trace. That's it, you know. So, yes, it's good. Then, okay. We save the library. So, if you want to get your own library, then how you save it. So, this one will show you the step, you know, in your computer. Okay, this is the uh, sugar uh, starch. Basically, if you buy the sugar powder from the uh, grocery store, Inside the sugar powder, it's not 100% sugar. It has some starch in it. And I want to calculate how much starch is inside the sugar powder. Is it 2% or 5%? Because the, the government allowed them to do between 2 to 5% of, of, uh, of the starch inside the sugar. Okay? And so I wanted to find out how much. So I went to the uh, shop, buy a, a, a sugar powder in, in one, one pound bag, you know. And then I get a starch, which is pure starch, and I take a spectrum. So this is starch spectrum, okay? Like you see, this is a pure starch, A2, okay? And then uh, I wanted to quantify this, how much starch in my, in my sugar powder. So I hit the quantifications, you see this? So I hit this. So in you know, some way, it allows you to not only the save library, create library, this is save the library data into the library, and I also could search the library. I search against, say, start this spectrum against this library to say, oh, this is starch or not. So I could do the search of the library and you could create your own. And I also quantify whatever in the mixture. Okay. So I will go through the steps. So I did the quantifications. You can see, okay, it identified the peaks now. So all those big peaks got identified. It. Okay. Those are, you know, with the cross on top, those are identified. It. So and over on the right hand side, you will say the ID say the first peak, 
is this and uh, the Raman shift the wavelengths okay the um, number here will be showing that on the right side and then on the right side you will say uh, the ratio against the, the number one say this is your number one say this one 485 number five peaks is, is your this is number five peaks you know is your uh, number one so equal to one so normalize to this peak is the ratio so those ratio are are consistent because you know the spectrum how many CH bound, how many CO bound, how many CS bound, they're all there and they all produce different uh, ratio. Okay, so then I just say save. Okay, I produce this library now, save. Okay, so I hit it and now this saved me a library. Okay, and then I do search, you know, then it will tell me, okay, what this compound is. So right now, I do the library search. I save it already. I do search on the next say starch coming. I search it. You can see it tell me okay, 100% match pure starch. You see 100% pure starch. It has three library data in there. You know we do this many times. So it match all the library data 100% match. So this because we identify the ratio of the peaks. We not just look at the trace. We identify the ratio and the peak height is very producible. So we can you know be able to make this 100% match of that. So it tell you, okay, then we could say, uh, okay, you want to have a report, then just go uh, print review, preview. So do print, print out the report for you. So you could save this in your uh, data library. So with the name, so you enter the name, which is in the method, and they are formula, they are structure, modify weight, whatever. So this will tell you, okay, this is starch, and then that's it. That's simple, three step. Okay, now I want to do calculation of how much stuff starch inside the sugar powder. Okay, again I do the quantity. This is proprietary. We give out our own software, and then that's so. On the first, I make sure that I think they are linear. Okay, so the linear relationship between the yeah. signal intensity and the amount of that. So then after that, again you know this is another trace we show is that that's a uh, this is 101 of uh, water aqueous. Uh, sugar, the Thai So in Argentina, if I go at uh, the sugar cane uh, factory, you can sell this, you know, method to them, or give them uh, to control their their sugar content before they go to evaporator and to produce, you know, they control the quality of the sugar produced. So actually, this is I work this for uh, one of the sugar companies in the United States, you know, develop the method for them. So this is the Thai uh, aqueous. So this first, you know, they give me 10%, and then this is for the 10% return. Then I dilute it, so they are overlapping too, 100 times running of that. So even in the aqueous, you know, near infrared, you cannot use an aqueous at all. But Raman don't have problem. You don't have to do anything. You just take their solution, scan on it, you know, and, and uh, that's it. So then if you dilute it down to by half, become 5%, dilute by 10 times, become 1%, you could overlay the trace. At the same time, you could see the intensity proportionally decrease. Okay. So this one, you could approve that, oh, okay, they are reproducible and also proportional to the, to the size. Now I want to determine now how much uh, <coughs> sugar protein, how much starch is in it. So I go scan this sugar powder, that's it. I just scan it and it's a sugar powder. Inside there, there are starch too. I want to check it, find out how much starch in it. So I, I basically go to quantify now. I got to go quantify. I give this key, and now you will bring up, uh, bring up the uh, starch, search the library, get the library data of the starch in there. So the red trace is from the library starch trace. So I mark it as a red trace, and I say, okay, I, I move it. I mark it to say, okay, this is the peak I want to remove from this composed sugar, say, sucrose and, and starch. This, the, the black trace can contain both sugar and starch. But then I identify, you know, there's one peak here, which is uh, easy, and I identify this the peak I want to identify. So I hit this and I quantify. I press quantify, you can see you calculate 2.5% of starch in there. Okay, so now in this trace, this is pure sugar now. 100% pure sugar, no starch in it anymore. And you take out 2.5% of sugar, uh, of starch. 
So this is a report give me, uh, so I send this report to uh, this sugar company. They say, oh, their product is perfect. It, <laughs> perfect agreement with what they make. No, no, yes. it's, it's good. It's good. It's good for for uh, uh, you have an, any reference for this instrument instrumentation uh, for PAT P A T process automatic technology B A T P A T uh -huh. P A T P A T for, for, for use this instrument on in, in the in the um, on light uh, control, pardon, in light in line control. Uh, in line control. Mm -hmm. for, for 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 the for the speed, for the precision, for the is 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 good. It's a it's a robust. Mm -hmm. It's a robust mm -hmm. instrument. Um, yeah, it's robust. Yeah, it's robust. Then there's no no trouble here. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, for for this reason, I I I I ask you for uh, about the the um, the valid the validation the qualification the qualification mm -hmm. instrument uh, because uh, the different different um, industry um, need the instruments um, for. Uh, give the the results uh, easy, mm -hmm. cheap, mm -hmm. yeah. and speed. Yes, <laughs> and the same. Yes, but this because oh. is a spectroscopy. Oh. You know, is a is a is a optical thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yes, it's very very easy to calibrate. But, but Not like instrument. HDLC, you know, instrument to instrument is impossible to make it the same data. The change time will shift from you know uh, you you have a method uh, developed in Florida. And I had a method developed in uh, New, Jer New Jersey, mm -hmm. you know, same thing, but the column changed too, you know, so how can you get it to the same? No way. But Roman is easy because we have a, just a spectral, you know, just a spectral, the pixel. So you can make it identical from instrument to instrument in, in Argentina or in Mexico, it's the same. No trouble, no problem mm -hmm. at all. Each equipment yes. will produce the same data for you. Same structure. That's why the library is useful. Otherwise, you know, it, it doesn't work. The library data could be changed from one 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 facility to other facility. You cannot use in the same library. But the spectroscopy, yeah, believe me, they are the same. <laughs> and that's the beauty of this product. Okay. Uh, for this reason, um, I I I ask you for the. Um, insist the qualification is very important for um, for us yeah. because yeah. Mm -hmm. is um, uh, is is um, yeah. all all customer need uh -huh. validation. Good, yeah. it's very good. It's in the yeah. instrument is perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have? Any document for qualification? Yes, we have the folder with all mm -hmm. methods of the producer uh, yeah. for qualification. Yeah. You have so, this? Yeah, we do. Because in the QC department, we go through the reference calculation, which is document, like in a, in a, in a we call ATP, ATP, acceptance test procedures. They have to follow the guideline, the SOP methods, and we also test the 96 oil to make sure they are reproducible from oil number one to oil number six, uh, 96. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's why that, you know, March 4th, that was the instrument we sent to Pittsburgh Conference in, in New Orleans. And that's the, the test data they, they give it to us. So the quality test is is a critical for because we is a new product you know so we have to make sure that uh, yes. the customer will get a hundred percent trouble free equipment. EQ, OQ, and PQ is mm -hmm. necessary yeah. for yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do have the test, and then we will install the equipment in your customer's facility. So for the we will go through a training with you in your facility. Say. 
for now we have a we have a we have like a, a promotional so if you uh, buy equipment from us now then we will send a, a, a expert engineer to your site to go through the training of your engineer both sales and service and the equipment I guarantee you they don't need service we've been equipment produced for two years we don't need anything at all it's just a very simple mechanical uh, robotic system inside that's it nothing else and the rest of it will be just one bolt you know it's only bolt and once some safety uh, switch in there the uh, uh, protecting the uh, power you know from surge you know, thunder or from the you know turn on uh, lights on and off that's all so our laser is protected by a, a overcurrent you know protection circuit <clears throat> So the, the circuit will jump, you know, uh, will jump if it overcurrent, say five ampere. So the laser operates 12 volts, and so everything is protected in in this equipment because we don't want to have a uh, spectrometer fail because that costs you know quite a lot of money. Yeah, Raman detector is very expensive, and then uh, we also do the IQ OQ uh, in the factory, and then we do the installation. We also do IQ OQ uh, for you. And PQ, so you have to meet those steps before you accept it and sign that signature down there. So at the end of installation, then everything will be okay. And we'll leave a user manual there in the software, in the help area for user manual. You can go to that manual anytime you want. And also the video will be also in there, so you could open the video to see how it operates. Your new new people coming in uh, as an employee for as a technician for the factory central company then they have to go through the video and which is inside the computer itself the normal computer of course you copy that you know to anywhere you want you know to make it into a a, uh, a powerpoint presentation area like a youtube you know type so those are all equipped you know because i'm in this business for more than 40 years i know what you know i start from varian associates i go through uh, Dionex, I go to uh, the scientific, I go through microtech, uh, I go through fractionation, and the quality of the products is very critical, you know, for the success of the product. So you don't want to make your customer to say they worry about you, you know, <laughs> that's that's very important, and you have to provide the best support you can. So that's why I had this online, you know, to uh, to be able to help you, uh, just internet, you know, through internet. I could operate your system regardless where you are. It could be in Mongolia, it could be in Russia, it could be in France, you know, or could Argentina. I could see your equipment and then be able to help you. Uh, if there any issue comes up, require you know some questions, yeah, then we we'll talk on the internet through uh, Team View, so you could see the screen, you know, uh, like I see your screen, you see my screen, something like that, quite easily. Okay, so, so this is a uh, data we could do both identifications and we could do quantification like I show you here, the steps you know, in our software. And uh, okay, another application is in the pigment. I don't know if this is important for you or not. The pigment is very difficult to analyze. So they are, you have tomato, tomato juice, you have uh, fruit juice, uh, you have power punch, you have all those uh, strawberry jam for your breakfast, you know, uh, toast, and you have uh, plum juice. You know, all this color in it. And how are you sure this comes from the natural color from your tomato, from your strawberry? I guarantee you that you know many of them do not, you know, have the have the priest color like you want to see. You know, they become that black or that brownish, you know, that pink color. And they are not the same color like what you, you try to see as an image. Or I want a strawberry color is you know red strawberry, and I want the uh, plum juice or the fruit juice is the same color I'm expecting. They add additive in there. Of course, they have eight of those pigments, food pigments, which is allowed. So the so I want to detect in the in the uh, the food industry. The 50 ppm is a uh, lower bar, you know, the, the, the vary, you need to see at least 50 ppm. Anything mm -hmm. about that is okay. 
you could add a lot in there anyway. So they could add 100 ppm in there. Uh, but there are eight of them, so we basically take the uh, eight pigments for the food industry. Those are permitted, like a legal, you know, food pigment. And then you can see that each pigment has their own unique spectrum. You can look at those. You know, for example, B2, this is a unique spectrum. They are all different from the other seven different. So you could use in this library to identify where is your B2. Is there B2 in there? Or you have B1 in there? Or you have R40 in there? You know, something R80 in there, R7 in your, in your food. So this color that like, you know, is a red color, blue color, uh, orange color, and all, all, all that stuff. So those are color uh, difference of those. Uh, that is yellow color, green color, the blue color, B2 is blue color, yellow color, red color. Okay, and just different, uh, like red six, red seven, red 80. Okay, so those are colors. So we get a spectrum and this in the library, and now you could detect, you know, what's in your food, uh, juice, or in your uh, gem. So we go through there to do a strawberry gem. In normal case, you know, what do you do in the, in the prescribed old method? Is that you have the, the you know, say, 1,000 ppm of uh, strawberry gems, uh, uh, strawberry gem, and you put 1,000 ppm of, say, B2, blue dye in there. And then, uh, then you stir it up, mix it well, and after that, you put a, a, a then cotton, that, 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 then wood, the white color wood in there. And the wood will absorb the dye from the strawberry jam. And then you take that wood uh, uh, fibers, you know, put ball, you know, in a way, in a way you take the wood uh, fabric, you know, out from the strawberry jams and assume that they absorb, you know, 80% or 50% of the strawberry, of the, of the D dye, D2, uh, blue, blue, blue uh, dye. And he, you then, you relieve that with ammonia, and then you concentrate it because it doesn't have enough concentration. Now you dilute it with ammonia, you dilute it out from the cotton, uh, from the wood uh, fiber. And then that you concentrate it, and after you concentrate, you separate with TLC, thin layer chromatography. And you separate, you know, how many spots on the thin layer paper. If three spots means three dyes on it. If it's two spots, there are two dyes in it. And how you quantify? You have a hard time to quantify because it's on piece of paper. Okay. So you have to, you have to, you have to do the transportation, transporting from there. Again, you leave it from there with organic solvents. Uh, and then you, you put it into HTLC. And all the process take almost like at least six hours to get it. Okay. And then after that, you have to detect by mass spec to make sure there's a dye B or you know, B2 or B6 or R7, you know, red dye 7. You know, all this is very labor intensive. So one sample could cost you six, seven hours. Okay. So in okay. our process, we don't need to do any of that. So what we do is that we take that, uh, that uh, wood, you know, uh, fibers out. Okay. We basically wash it with water, and since dye already coated, you know, absorbed by the by the fiber, by the wood, the wood fiber. So we then put the wood fiber into nice six oil, you know, compress it, you know, kind of press it in, and then we scan it. That's it. That's as simple as that. And now you can see this is in wood. Okay, here is absorbed in wood. So we have 50 minutes PPM, 100 PPM, 1000 PPM. You can look at the B2. This is a B2 dye, the blue dye. Okay, you can see, oh, 1,000 ppm, this is huge peaks, very, very high intensity. And the signature, all the other spectrum are there. The fingerprints are all there, compared to whatever we had before on the previous side. And the same thing, for the 100 ppm, from 50 ppm. So you can see it very easily, this 50, blue is 50, and red is 100 ppm. So you can see that they are very easily identified without doing anything. No eluding, no ammonia, no nothing. And just put the cotton, the wood fiber into a 96 oil, put it into our machine, and you test it. So this is standard. We just, you know, put this in the, the area solution of 50, 100, and 100 ppm. And we absorb in our BT treatment and absorb in wood. And we, you know, dry it out, remove the water. You know, this is not the other, like a steel stain. You know, we don't need to hold it really dry. 
and then put underneath and within two seconds, two minutes, without cost you anything, you got it. You basically happy, you know, we get you now let's do a real sample. So we go to strawberry jam, we get a strawberry jam from uh, from the store and we put uh, hundred same thing, we put the the uh, pigment, B2 pigment in there, in strawberry, strawberry jam, and we stir it up, so that and then we put the same uh, wood in there, we put the wood in there. And after we put it in there, then uh, soak it up there for about 10 minutes, and we take it out, then we wash it. So we wash the jams out, we wash, you know, the, the uh, liquids out, whatever, you know, fibers out of it, uh, starch, not starch, yeah, there's starch in there too, uh, sugars, you know, all that kind of eat it out. And then we put, same thing, we just put that in a well, compress it, you know, put it like a, and then now we go to analyze it. Same thing, you just scan it. So you can see those are the scan data, the real data. So the first sample is 50% uh, the pigment without strawberry, just a pigment that like we did before from wood, just from various wood. So this is the one we identify, right? So the signature peak for all the components of the B2 spectrum of the, of the pigment. And now if you look at this 1000 ppm from strawberry, from strawberry gem. You can see their signature there, everybody. And then you can see they are coming out with good signature. Again, this is under PPN, 50 PPN. So now you can identify 50 PPN by looking at this, you know, and you could do, you know, by doing a calibration curve, you could do quantification of it. So this is as simple as two minutes and without causing a lot of headaches, you know, without TLC, without eluding from TLC uh, paper and without going through uh, mass spectrometry. And after you eluding from the TLC, you have to concentrate too. So there are a lot of steps involved and a lot of error could be produced. And also you have to do a calibration, you have to do a brink. Otherwise, you know, what you know about, well, the fiber may have something in there, or the paper may have something in there, or the sample may have something in there too. So this is allow you to do very, very quick and very easy of your control of your of your you know products and in the process you know going through all that and of course you know they are doing 1000 ppm in their their top in anyway to change the color you know of mm -hmm. your strawberry jam so this is very very simple again you know in conclusions I would say you know after you see all this you could say it's it's a fully automated that's why I avoid it from the uh, user or from the um, Operators manipulation, operators error. Everything is in con control by computer. Very very fast. The scan only take you know a couple of seconds, but we usually you know we have to process data and all that. So in 1.2 minutes we got everything reported out and everything is there. So it's very good identification and quantification. This machine allows you to do quantification. So because of our software and because of our unique reproducibility, which we guarantee. And so, in a way, if you only have three ingredients in drugs, then why you have to go through HPLC, get to all this sample preparation? No, you don't need to. By right? the table, put in the well, and that's it. Uh, a sample tray, that's it. And you can scan it. So that's to identify the content uniformity, become a very powerful machine here. So you don't have to go through, you know, 1,000 hours or, or, or 20, 25, you know, 100 hours of analysis for 1,000 data, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this accuracy-wise, in terms of the spectral wave number, at the moment we say it's 100% match. We cannot produce other than that, you know, from our machine. We never have a different number, the like 998.28, that's it, you know? And then in terms of the accuracy or the intensity we produce, right now the, the worst we got is 0.64%. If you're using the flat, like a silicon wafer, we got like 0.2 percent because it's flat. You know, it's everything is is uh, is no no shifting, no curve. You know, on the on the sample. But you doing like a EDTA powder, we we got the 0.54, and we got you know the regular things. You got about 0.7 because it, uh, this come from the uh, polystyrene 0.64 percent. So I think within one percent error, uh, we could have no trouble at all, and that's with 96 times of testing it, not just one time and two times, you know, normally HPLC, you produce five, six times, you already say, oh, okay, that's enough, you know, just costing too much time and money. Sensitivity-wise, of course, we have our own search rate, 
which allow us to detect marijuana uh, down to about 10 ppb with our cells produced. So we have a very cheap, non-expensive non, uh, chip, chip. We produce that ourselves here. It will put on the 96 oil. So each time you produce 96 cells, uh, substrate, so you can use it for 96 sample. So this oil is cheap. You know, compared to regular oil uh, cells, it costs you uh, $100 a piece or $55 a piece. All, all chip is cost five dollars a whale. You know, like a, every sample you test it, the maximum cost to you is five dollars. That's all. You know, and other producer they do one at a time. But this one you can have the ninety six whale, all the sample in there, and then you just go into the instrument and you test ninety six sample at the same time. Okay, if you want to, or you put just three whale, uh, head sample in it, and you just run three sample, and that's it. They start at three. So very flexible hope for you. And so from distribution point of view, you could say this as a consumable. And you could get, uh, you know, uh, because they have to, they're using search to enhance their translation. For example, from the HPLC aliens, you know, you may have to use in search because their concentration is somewhere sub PPM, you know, or PPB. Then you have to use in search to enhance the signal uh, to 1,000 uh, 1, times uh, or 10,000 times or 1 million times. So the search will be a consumable item for you to uh, keep talking to customers, you sell this product. And uh, that's, that's the way, you know, will be that a column in HPLC. You know, but this one don't cost you much money at all. You know, in terms of the solvent saving, in terms of operator saving and time saving, just a, 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 a huge saving in terms of your budgeting uh, for the operation or use of, uh, of the HPLC system. So this is almost like, at least you know ten times to twenty times of that deduce. Okay, it's fast. Mm -hmm. So for content uniformity, this is the the best way to do it. Not the HPLC. No way HPLC can do content uniformity because you only test one at the one only one percent only. How can you assure that all the tablets which you put in the bottle, uh, one hundred twenty four of them, one hundred twenty of them, they are all good. I guarantee you that they are not because we test many many bottles from many different companies now. So we send the data to them to say, hey, you know, from our data, and we, we could see variation in there. Uh, do you want to give us a, a chance to demo it to you, you know, prove to you that, you know, that's the case. Okay. So then we send out all the data uh, like this for the company produce the drugs, and we get it from the over counter. So this is going to be a big, uh, big uh, important issue now, because we could test it very cheaply now. Not like you test, you know, spend sixty dollars $60 for one sample, and only can test one percent for for FDA. This one you could do it for your own, you know, own check. You know, you you want to guarantee your your product, food products, your 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 chemical and your drugs is is no problem has no problem. Okay, your 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 raw material will not get rejected by your buyer. You know, because they could do this test now uh, very quickly in a couple of minutes. They tell your drug driver. And turn it, you know, take it back because you can take it with tolerance <laughs> inside. So mm -hmm. this is uh, going to be a, a very as long as we promote it. The key is how to promote it. That's how we set up our worldwide distributor network to get this message, this equipment out there. And this is very simple. This not not even have to worry about maintenance. And for the technical support, our, our scientists here already available. You just you know email you email us or line us. Or uh, Skype at us, say we have to get connected. We have this question. Yes, yes. It's good. And then we could turn on the team view. You turn on the team view. You give us the password. Yeah. Then, then we go through all this, you know. Uh, so even in your laboratory, uh, we could help you, you know, every step. Okay. Okay. It's good. It's very, so very good. I just wanted to know, this is available, and I want to see you have interest. And give us, you know, uh, support in this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I appreciate your your interest and uh, the time you have with us. And this is <laughs> quite difficult beginning, and so I appreciate your patience. You know, uh, allow us to get this connected and uh, be able to. Oh, I have no. spend uh, I don't know how many hours I have now with you. Sorry about the delay here, but you know, I think this important no, message. No, you know, no, thank you, thank you for you, thank you for you. It's, it's very amazing. The, the, the instrument is very, 
It's very amazing. Yeah. So uh, this, uh, this I, again. Uh, I can see a, a, a lot of uh, customers that uh, can use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On on principle mainly mainly in 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 foods. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oil food. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Color. Uh, yeah. Oil. Oil. Uh, mm -hmm. We we principal uh, principal um, customer of uh, uh -huh. you I you see. know you know we we are a uh, brain rose representative here. No. Oh, I see. Beautiful. Yes. I don't see your website, but I, I just have a few minutes, you know, scan through your website. So we we we, are, we are the representative of Brain Rose, uh, near Brain Rose, uh, wow. on the process, on the process instrument. Uh, we right. in, in, we have two customers, uh, rep, uh, IPF, IPF um, Argentina, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. is the uh -huh. producer, producer of um, Gasoline, gasoline. Uh huh. Um, I see. But use the near, near, near technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, yes, sorry, for right? environmental, yes, right. env environmental uh, problem is not possible solution with near. Yeah. Because the yeah. the high level of water. Uh huh. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. In this case. Uh, this case is the solution. Yeah, it I, is. I, it I, is. I, um, uh, correct me because I, uh, I I can see the possible applications. Yes. Good. Good. It's Good. possible. This here, yes, for mm -hmm. detect detect a uh, uh, oxid oxid a um, uh, high level. Um, no, a low level, low level of a uh, component of the um, uh, contaminant mm -hmm. is it, it, good. It's good. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I I believe it's good. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the problem of the pharmaceutical is the speed of the rec the receipt of the raw material. The mm -hmm. it's yeah. very problem. It's very problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the problem is the database of the the near system or the uh, high a, a lot of uh, conditions need for use the near system. Mm -hmm. In this case, mm -hmm. it's, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The data is simple. Yeah, the, just the simple. You just put the uh, raw material uh, in there, or without even in there, just go through the bag. You know. Mm -hmm. The customer yeah. uh, can um, can buy the the, the database or yeah. mm -hmm. uh, construct uh, or uh, made your owner database. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, it's easy. And the problem is the database. Database is is a is a lot of time, lot of money. Uh, yeah. Is not a reproduce. Is mm -hmm. not. It, 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 this is problem here. Yeah, because most of the company they maybe produce one hundred different uh, different products. So you can view your own, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, that's that's then you only compare to hundred data instead of ten thousand data, which take a long time to compare. So it's it's fast, you know. If you only have one hundred data, two hundred data, five hundred data is in there, it is fast. You don't need to waste a lot of time try to compare to ten thousand data. Because they are not yeah, in the same category as what your product is. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. It. Yes, um, mm -hmm. here, here we have uh, we have the the phrase the phrase is the local phrase, but um, uh, yeah. never never the instrument is possible uh, cooking, wash, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, planchar, the, 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 <laughs> yes, you, you understand? I agree. <laughs> no, of course, all, uh, of course. all instrument is complementary. Yes, in this yeah. case, yeah. Uh, Raman is very good for uh, the 
the the NIRS and the HPLC. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it, it cannot depress it. No way. Yeah, it's not depressment for it. For the for the for this reason, I ask you about the, the is possible use for the, the mass spectroscopy because uh, my partner uh, is a, a big 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 experience in a mass spectroscopy. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. But yeah. the problem of the mass mm. spectroscopy is the problem is detect the, um, the and identify the the products that uh, introduce to the uh, mass spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Normally, the HPLC used for introduce the, yeah. Um, the, yeah. the yeah. yes, but yeah, you have to yeah. Normally, normally use. A PDA, a uh -huh. right, uh, right. right yes. yeah, polyethylene array, yeah. But the 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 PDA have the uh, problems uh, about the um, uh, the identified exactly. Yeah, yeah. the impurity yes. parameter is difficult to control yes. to set. Yes, depend depend the the. The the solvent depend the conditions depend yeah. the other the other the other the other uh, <laughs> problem yes yeah uh -huh. okay. I've been uh, doing HC, HPLC all my life you know pretty much so yeah. I know how how HPLC I'm the inventor of Chapia HPLC yeah that was my invention you know so they, right now people using Chapia HPLC to uh, to connect it to MassTech for proteomic research. Yeah, that was my uh, invention in 1980, 81, mm -hmm. long, long time ago. But now it's become very useful too for cancer research. Okay, in this yeah. case, if 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 we use the uh, Raman, it's possible to detect exactly that uh, the product need to go to the mass spectrometer. You don't need to if you don't want to. You just go through, connect this, correct the sample from HPLC with the, say, a Gilson detect, Gilson fraction corrector. Mm -hmm. You correct into, say, 96 oil. And then after that, you put in the 96 oil into AccuScan 1500. And that's it. You can identify what's in there for you. Okay. And if, if it is trace amount of HPLC aliens in there, say they are sub PPM or whatever, then you uh, correct it into a 96 oil source. So the source underneath that will be enhanced your signal. So you can see it. So those two are all available. If you are concentrated, you don't need to have source. If you have diluted, then you connect with it. You correct it into a source from using mm -hmm. pressure corrector. And basically, basically, you know, customers don't have to worry about anything. That's a transfer from there to our plate or sample holder and then push the button and that's it. You can mm -hmm. tell you what is it, you know, in, in your okay. sample. Either compare with your base uh, uh, pick, you know, which you have on built up in your library or compared to the commercially available library. So, okay. And okay. also, by the way, if you have sample uh, at this moment, you don't have, you know, demo equipment, you know, to, to use. So, or uh, even you have demo equipment, you have any technical issue, you can connect to our place. You know, we have help you on develop method for you. Analyze this chemical as you, you know, be there. And then, uh, if you have a uh, sample, you are the analyze for customer now. You could send to us to US. You know, with a just uh, just a little bit sample. The less than one cc is enough. Half cc is enough for us. Okay. And and so you can or any powder, any storage, you know, it's okay. As long as you mm -hmm. know, just send tiny amount, then we will analyze it for you and then develop the method for you. So we help you, you know, promoting your you know sales. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well so so you know uh Jure will follow up with you. Jure is our uh, like a South American uh like uh, management, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will be in contact with you and set up all this relationship and about the demo units, about the discount we will offer you and about the uh, like a, like a uh, promotion bonus, you know, to you. And then uh, hopefully, you know, everything uh, 
do it quickly and we can promote this right away because the end of the year is now. They want to budget it. Uh, they usually now start the budgeting. After Labor Day, the budget process started. And if you have a chance to see these women, they may not even want to buy someone, something else. If they have budget, want to do this. And at the end of the year, uh, if this order comes in, uh, even the leftover money from this year, uh, they may, you know, plan to buy this thing. So by December 24th, we need to ship out everything to the uh, U.S., you know, I mean, Argentina, I don't know, you probably have the same uh, Christian uh, type of uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So by Christmas, everybody <laughs> shut down. And uh, yeah. by before that, you know, it'll be New Year, and after New Year, new budget. So the end of the year usually has some budget left over, you know, maybe the time to uh, do either a decent train, you know, say you only pay partial, uh, like a monthly payment, you know. So there are two options available to your customer once this from us or from you, or, you know, buy from us or basically from you. So that's two ways we could talk about it, you know. So we will give you all kind of support we can and uh, uh, give you a good startup. So we have good this kind, you know, beginning. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hopefully you review our data or company or product. We're just uh, changing our website to a new website right now because the old website got attacked by by uh, by so-called the, uh, how you call this, people want to have a credit card, right? Because our website can do credit card purchase. And, and so a lot of uh, those uh, attack, you know, every two, three months I got an attack from from uh, uh, the people who want to look into our website, you know, steal our information mm -hmm. and uh, the the Trojans, you know, in there. So I decided, okay, we're going to go to one of the uh, very well protected company uh, as our host. Uh, so there will be uh, a multi layer of wall, you know, so they won't get in. And uh, so we decided to do that uh, early this year. So now the website is in the process of setting it up, pretty much uh, there, but we don't have a picture much picture that Raman uh, is there, but uh, it doesn't have enough information I want to see or link into it at all application we have. So bear with us for another maybe couple of weeks, we'll get it, everything set up. So this one will protect our, you know, kind of credit card shopping, shopping cart, and that would allow us to be secure, you know, from shopping cart point of view. So the website being uh, is down, uh, we discard the old one and then use the new one right now. We contract with the new, contractor to develop this for us, spend a lot of money, but hopefully the website will be more secure. The credit card cost will enter there will be, you know, less trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you could look at that, like uh, www.acutechscientific.com to look yes, on the uh, website. Uh, okay. I visited uh, yesterday uh -huh, uh, yeah. the, the website. It's very so we don't have picture. We have a picture in there. We add more information, a more application in there, and mm -hmm. uh, also the new distributor sign up. Like in your company, uh, you sign up. We'll add your, you know, directory, your contact information into our website too, so people could look for you. You know, when they have contact, uh, try to buy something. You know, and contact you for information or for quotations. So okay. you will be our representative uh, in in Argentina area. You know, the whole whole country. Okay. 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 Well, uh, right. thank you. Thank you for yeah. the, for the the introduce. Uh, All right. The, the, it's very it's very interesting, and we are interested in the technology for Good. for all right. reasons. Okay. And, uh, we we are the the new company. New new company is a, is a lot of <laughs> is a. Uh, because um, we have one one year one year day of life. Uh, oh, you only one year old. <laughs> it's, it's a new yeah, Yes, yes, it's a new. I see. Uh, so we are we are three years. So we we, we are the we are the, <laughs> the representative of Brinrof of Argentina. Uh, yeah. Uruguay. So I just set up this new company to do ramen. You no. Know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh wow. Oh okay. Hmm. Representative of uh, Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Uruguay, Paraguay, hmm. y, uh -huh. este, y Uruguay. Wow. Uh, for Green right. Rose. And uh, we, are, we, have, uh -huh. uh, we work uh, with the Waters HPLC 
for validation, uh -huh. uh, um, trainings of uh, uh, and the TA instruments of thermal analysis. Is this a, oh, is a, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Yes, yes. Good, uh, good, good. Very good. I, I am happy that. Uh, the other application is the other application for Raman in the in the yeah. TGA thermal thermogra thermogravimetry thermogravimetry uh, analysis mm -hmm. is possible uh, coupled yeah. with the Raman. It's a good. It's yeah. a good. Yeah. Okay. And also for the for the elements, you know, is organic oxide, the, the titanium oxide that I show you on the on the presentation here. So titanium mm -hmm. oxide, calcium oxide, calcium carbonate, they are all very sensitive. So you can detect mineral too. Yes, yes, it's a good. So it's a good. I think you know, I have quite a lot of mineral, you know, the gems and all this. You can detect the with a new sharp spectrum. A carbon, mm -hmm. like a diamonds, you know, like a, like a uh, rubies, you know, all those could be detected. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank all you. All right. You're quite welcome, and appreciate uh, the opportunity to know you online. So hopefully, in the near future, we can meet mm -hmm. each other in Argentina. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I really, I saw the Argentina uh, you know, movie. Uh, you that was impressive. You know <laughs> Beautiful <Argentina>. movie. <laughs> you know Argentina? Okay. So, uh, yeah, so just okay. email me if you want to, or any question or anything you would like to uh, contact me about. So my email address is on my website, like sales at equitescientific.com, and I will get that information right away, okay? Okay, okay. All right, appreciate Thank it. Okay. Thank you for all. Nice to have a chance to, to discuss this with you. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and lunch. All right. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. See you Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, Gerard. Bye, Mr. Tencio. Thanks for joining us.